2020 awards, um, a Pacific Chamber of Commerce Awards and Recognition even, Evening. I'm delighted to be here. Um, my name is Jenny Jaquith, and I'm delighted to be here to uh, serve as your MC for the evening. <laughs> The chamber was actually established in 1957 when the city incorporated and since that time it's been committed to promoting and supporting local businesses in Pacifica in order to create a healthy and vital economy in, in the community. Uh, this evening is a celebration of the contributions and outstanding and uh, of a number of outstanding and talented chamber members and the contributions they've made to the to this community. And we're also going to be recognizing some special new businesses that have started in Pacifica, which we're all very pleased about. Um, <laughs> this is uh, sort of the chamber's answer to the Academy Awards. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm delighted to serve as the uh, MC for this important annual event. Um, in this role, I'm going to make a couple of promises, and I need all of you to help me. Uh, uh, ensure that uh, I keep my promises. Um, so I will do my best with everybody's cooperation to uh, make sure that this event doesn't go as long as the real Academy Awards. <laughs> and I'll also promise not to tell any kind of silly jokes and most important, not to sing. So don't count on that. <laughs> All right, so let's, uh, let's start the evening with uh, some introductions of uh, some honored guests who were here. First of all, um, <coughs> from um, Supervisor Don Horsley's office, Chris Hunter. Chris? <laughs> from Jerry Hill's office, uh, Elmer um, Martinez, way on the back here. <laughs> from our favorite Congresswoman's office and our favorite assistant, uh, Katrina Hill. Let me introduce two of our wonderful city council members, uh, former mayor, just recently former mayor, Sue Vaudrelas, <laughs> and former mayor, Mike O'Neill. And I think we have former mayor, Karen Urban, who is also in the audience today. <laughs> thank you all, thank you all for, uh, for coming. Uh, okay, so before we begin, um, this evening's program and the awards portion of it, I'm pleased uh, to introduce your chamber president, Lisa Eccleston, who will present some, make some comments. I also want to welcome you all here tonight. <laughs> um, last year was my first time at this event, and um, the one thing that really touched me about everybody and you know being a small business owner myself is that you know we get caught up in the day-to-day -day, uh, business of running a business and worrying about our businesses and you know all of that type of thing and to, to come here and last year to see you know how touched everybody was to receive an award um, and I've even heard that tonight um, from people that you know this is not something you expect when you're kind of grinding away in your day-to-day -day business you know to get to get honored and um, recognized by your community um, Normally, the, um, this evening is the awards and the installation of new board members. At the end of 2018, we had about a handful of, of board members, um, and thanks to Katie Smith from North American Title, who had this, had this vision that she was going to get you know, all these new members. Um, and I'm not really a betting woman, but I was pretty like close to betting $1,000. Not one person would respond to the email, and we wound up with 12 board members. Um, and we've only lost one of them who, who was moved out of town for business. Um, so we're really, um, we're really pleased and um, very grateful for the board that we have. And if any of you have ever served on a board of directors for anything, there's usually a lot of fighting and, you know, personalities. And I just have to say, this is like the, the nicest group of people who are really just committed and, you know, as you know, it's all volunteer, so it's... Um, it's really a, it's really a treat to serve with them. Um, I just wanted to let you know that, um, you know, we've we've kind of gone through some transitions as a chamber and trying to get our feet on the ground. And you know, one of the things that we had a really um, 
you know, char charismatic uh, intern a couple of summers ago who got this idea that we should do a map. Um, and she produced this map, and, and um, just to give you a little background, she was going to do a business card size ad and sell them for $600. And I'm not one to step on anybody's dream, but I thought, okay, go for it. If I have to, I'll buy several spots, you know. I couldn't get a spot by the time she was done. I was, they were like all sold out. And she did a wonderful job, and you all have a copy of that um, um, on your table um, right now. But she was a, a super, super person. So we, we're doing something a little bit different this year. We have six honorees, and the honorees that we have all have you know, served this community in their own unique ways, and we really appreciate them. But we've also added a new category, which we're calling the Special Recognition Award. Um, and some of this, most of them are new businesses this year, this last year, and I think one or two of them are just people that we just couldn't, you know, miss this opportunity to, to kind of tell you a little bit about them. Um, one of the big events of our year, which we will have again, was the Taste of Pacifica. And um, I want to let you know that the restaurants in this town do not know what a taste is. Each table would give you so much food that you could barely, you know, hit six tables before you were full which never stopped me from going on and on to the other tables. Um, and we, and we, have this, uh, we have our annual tree lighting event, which most of you know that J Darlene Gonzalez from Supreme Row um, started not few years ago. And uh, you know, we're proud to support her in this. And then we also joined forces with the city of Pacifica this year, who, you know, they, with the uh, Parks and Recreation, and they do the Elf Market. And so we, we had the three day, kind of a three day event where we had the, you know, all the in fun things that they have for the kids at the elf market and all the, you know, fabulous crafts and food and types of things that are sold at that. And then it ended with the tree lighting ceremony with our own special Santa, Mike O'Neill, coming to town. <laughs> um, so anyway, at this time, I'm going to turn, um, turn the mic back over to uh, Jenny Strickland, who we are so happy that you agreed to MC for us tonight. Please um, um, join me in welcoming uh, Mary uh, Bronzuela, who is going to make the uh, presentation to uh, the Green Enchilada. Thank, thank you. She got my name right. That's really awesome. Excuse me for my voice. Um, I've been downing uh, lozenges all day because I know I had to speak tonight. So my name is Mary Brenzuela. I'm a close friend of uh, Yolanda Diaz and Mario Alvarez and the Grand Gelada, and I'm also a business consultant. Tonight, it's my honor to present this award to Yolanda Diaz, Mario Alvarez, and the staff of the Green Enchilada. It is because of their sheer determination and commitment to excellence that they have earned the Outstanding Business of the Year Award. It was, tw it was 2012 when I first met Yolanda Diaz and her sister Rosa when they retained me to implement an electronic health record system for their Cedar Lane care home in Montera. I was immediately and still impressed on their incredible holistic approach to care. Back in 2013, Yolanda told me, I'm looking at buying the Green Enchilada restaurant. My first comment was, what experience do you have running a restaurant? She shrugged her shoulders and said, quote, the Green Enchilada fits into my vision and philosophy of healthy living. Back then, I was a skeptic. On top of that, Yolanda said, and Mario is going to help me run the place. And I said to myself, oh wow, Mario never ran a restaurant either. I'm really worried. The eye-opening surprise was on me. I have watched firsthand since 2013 how Yoli and Mario's unflagging commitment despite having no experience, has catapulted the green enchilada to a whole other level. Future plans include growth of the green enchilada 
including the opening of other locations in the area. It is with my great honor and pleasure that I present this award to Yolanda and Maria. Congratulations. Before we go to our next award recipient, I want to uh, apologize, but make an introduction that I forgot. It was on my list. So I, would we all give a round of applause to our wonderful city manager, Kevin Woodhouse. <laughs> and at this point, I'm... Uh, Pleased to introduce two people that probably are pretty well known in this room: uh, Carol Camacho and uh, Chuck and Chuck Gust, who are going to uh, who are going to make the presentation to the Seabreeze Motel. Carol. Hey. Good evening, everybody. My name is Carol Camacho, and I'm here to present the award uh, to Dylan Patel. Uh, manager, retiring manager of the Sea Breeze Motel, um, but there's somebody that knows him better than I, and he wants to tell you a little story before I get into mine. <laughs> Chuck. Thank you. Uh, welcome, and uh, it's really a privilege and an honor to be with a lot of the independent businesses that are here in the community, and uh, know that uh, we're able to. Uh, have you here and host it, and, um, and anyway, and award uh, some of these people that have been really instrumental to the industry uh, or businesses in the community. Uh, Dylan and Hem, uh, uh, I can't say enough about the two of them. I do have to tell a, a short story about when uh, Hem was manager of the First National Bank. And uh, my dad would go to pick up change or do whatever he had to do. And um, Ham kind of smoothed him a little bit. And, uh, you know, Dylan wanted to have a place on the ocean and maybe something that he could lease or do a motel or some kind of lodging. And this conversation went on for a long time. Um, I know that when it got settled, I think Ham has always felt that she was the one that motivated and made it happen. But I'm here tonight to tell you, him that, yeah, it was, it was something way different than that. Um, even though my dad was fond of you and always loved talking to you at the bank and everything else, I, he, uh, I, I have to tell you this story. So uh, he would come back to me and tell me, uh, geez, I have these two people and the manager at First National Bank wants to come down and lease the motel. And, uh, and I was pretty much against it. I said, no, there's too many things that go on down there. We need to have control. We need to be the ones in charge. We need to be the ones running this place and on and on and on and on. 
This went on for quite a while. I think it was on a Friday night, and we were very busy. And uh, him and Dylan will absolutely relate to this. Uh, they called me up from down at the motel, and they said, uh, there's a heater that's not working. We have no other room to put these people. Somebody needs to fix the heater. I got some tools. I ran down. I have no idea what room it was in. Laid down on the ground, the wall heaters, laid down on the ground with a wrench and screwdriver and whatever I could find and started taking out the thermocouple because that's what it always was. And while I did that, the two folks that were down there that were going to uh, stay in the room sat on the edge of the bed, probably two feet from where I was lying down on the carpet, asking me what was on the menu, what was good to eat, <laughs> And how long have I been doing this? They never stopped talking for the whole time that I was laying there, uh, probably after a couple of cocktails and not really happy about being there. Anyway, the next day I got up, I saw my father and I said, call him. So I brought this thermocouple as a gift to Dylan and him and to tell them that this is the real reason that we went forward. It was probably one of the better decisions that we had made uh, uh, as, as, as business uh, owners. And I want to tell you that I have not met a, a more kind, uh, courteous, uh, courteous, and conscientious couple. Uh, and they've been great people to have working for us. So I'm, I'm honored to be here and, and to help out with the award. So. I'll give this to uh, my son-in-law, Jack. He, he'll need it, <laughs> believe me. And my daughter is Nina. Dylan would come into the um, chamber and always be, know that I'm busy and be polite. But you just, in Dylan's presence, you always just want to stop with your doing and just listen to him. There's something about him that just makes you calm and want to listen to him and do anything for him. So Dylan has resided in Pacifica since 1988. He's now retiring and going to be passing the reign over to his son-in-law Jack and daughter Nina. So the Next Generation Award is all about that. Um, there's not too many businesses in Pacifica that are going on to the next generation. I can name three that are in this room, um, but it's a very difficult, it can be a difficult thing to do because um, your family, the next generation, has to have the same passion as you do in order to do that. And so I congr congratulate you know, him, his wife, and Dylan in their retirement, and Nina and Jack, I'm wishing you the best of luck in running the uh, Sea Breeze Motel. I can see now why the Gus family entrusted you with the Sea Breeze. Um, you would think that Dylan owned the Sea Breeze because he cares for it so much. It seems like he does own it. Um, Dylan's uh, faith and religion um, and some of the inspiration for giving back to the community came from Chuck's father, Nick. And Dylan has done many things to give back to the community and his religion that he believes in. So the best of luck to you all. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Uh, I'd just like to say, um, what, uh, thank Lake. Nick and Lorraine for giving me a chance of running the motel and once uh, I started running I, I, I went to Nick's office when he's always there so I, I said Nick how come he chose me to give me a chance he says first of all you have a heart for what goes on on Rockaway Beach and you're so kind and you, if you have a heart, and if, if you run it the way you want to do, and if you care about Pacifica, and he said you go to the town meetings and all that, 
that's how I met Nick. And, and believe me, it's, uh, after a couple of years, I became one of the families. And, and this Nick's restaurant and the sea breeze has always been, it's like a family. If we have a problem here, Chuck, if I, if I had a problem at the motel, I would ask Chuck's advice, and if Chuck had something that I can do, he would say, Dylan, can you do this for us early in the morning? I would do it. So you've you got to have a heart for Pacifica. And if you care about Pacifica and the community, it, it goes on. And my dad always says, treat people the way you want to be treated. That's number one. In business, if you're kind, people will always come back. Thank you so much for the award for Chamber of Commerce. We have one more award before dinner starts. So I would like to uh, <coughs> call on Bill Meyerhoff to come forward to present the uh, very prestigious Nick and Lorraine Gust Lifetime Achievement Award. Well, again, um, I wasn't sure I was back to back here, so. Uh, Suzanne, what can we say? Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk a little about a little bit about the Suzanne. I know Bill will probably talk about the Suzanne. He knows, and all of us know who Suzanne is. Very, very, uh, with uh, the support or, or with the uh, compliment of the Nick and Lorraine Gus Award in the tape. If you remember, I don't know if you remember DVD. My mother said, uh, "Hard work never hurt anybody," and that says a lot about who Suzanne is. She is always engaged. She very community orientated. Roll your sleeves up jump in, get involved. So with that said, I love her for that. But when she comes in and answers the phone and takes a reservation, or grabs two menus and seats people in the dining room, or, uh, uh, yeah, engaged and roll their sleeves up and yeah, get involved, that's Suzanne. So tonight I thought, before she got the award, is there something that I would like to give her? And there is. Um, time and time again, I would be, again, back at the bar, having a couple cocktails, talking to some friends, and Suzanne would come and catch me and say, uh, by the way, uh, the third stall in the ladies' room uh, has uh, no toilet seat covers. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I, I try to use the hand towel machine. It doesn't work. Where do I go to get the hand towels and this and that? So, I thought about this, and this has happened up until recently, so when she was getting the award, I thought there's got to be something that I could find to give oh to God. Suzanne. So there is. <laughs> this is going to be Suzanne's work belt <laughs> when she comes to Nick's. It, there is a key, by the way, Suzanne, to what we call the beer room, and the beer room is where we do a lot of stocking and things and uh, paper goods and everything else. There is a key to the beer room. You will not have to come and bother me at the bar <laughs> and tell me about how many things are missing in the ladies' room anymore. So your belt will be hanging there with a master key to get into the room and you can just go in as you please and take care of things. We love you. Suzanne's just sweet and innocent. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Bill Meyerhoff, and it's a pleasure to be here tonight. Pacifica Play School. What an honor. The Nick and Lorraine Gust Lifetime Achievement Award. To me and many others, this award represents the epitome of success combining family, business, and community. Four generations 
over 60 years. Sukka Play School was started by Betsy Day in 1959 in the Rockaway Beach Progressive Hall, located behind the Shell Station right here in Rockaway Beach. Her daughter Shirley Wheeler worked with her, with her from the beginning until 1979 when she decided to return to college to become a registered nurse. In September of 1964, Pacifica Play School moved to their current location in the Fairmont District on Hickey Boulevard. In 1984, Susan Wheeler Johnson, the third generation, was involved in child development courses and joined the then 25-year-old business. Capitalizing on her own education and the experience and professionalism of the first two generations, Susan is now the cornerstone and the spirit of Pacifica Play School. Suzanne is now joined by her, the fourth generation, her daughters, Alyssa and Andrea, who are already grooming the next generation, Sequoia, Ryder, and Tegan. <laughs> Along with the students' parents, Pacifica Play School has taught, taught, nurtured, and laid the groundwork for the future success of thousands of local children. I was talking to Chuck Gus' son, Nick, the other day. <clears throat> He's the owner of Stage Ranch Building. We were discussing this, how a solid and well-built foundation is extremely important to the success of a building project how the meticulous and precise work of the foundation is the basis for the finished product. Just as in building the foundation that Pacifica Play School has been meticulously and precisely providing for the children of our community, enable them to flourish academically, socially, and independently. What more noble of a vocation could you have in a community than teaching and nurturing their children? I am extremely thankful for the teaching, nurturing, and success of Pacifica Play School. Because as you see, as a three-year-old child, I, my foundation would, began with them. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, Pacifica Play School. and design part uh, department of Taco Bell. So uh, when this came about, Dave called me and said we would absolutely love to be there because we worked so hard to get this project through and you know for us it was about a couple things. One, we wanted to preserve the heritage of that building. You know, many folks told us, we hear stories from back when it was an A&W, yeah. right? Yeah. And, and so we hear the story, so we, we worked to preserve the heritage, but we also wanted to put a building there that everybody in Pacifica and all those folks globally around the world, when they come here to Pacifica, it's something that we're all proud of. And we wanted you to be very proud of what we did on the beach as well. 
And I think that the finished product turned out amazing. So we also knew that for us to, to do the building, that to spend the money to remodel the building is one thing. But when we are finished spending that money, it's about, we want to be good neighbors. And we want to do the right thing in the community where we do business. And that was probably the most important thing to us as we got into this venture. And so we went out and we got a general manager who actually lives here in Pacifica. That was important to us to get somebody who understood the community, who cared about the community, and, and did business in the community. And uh, as you all know, that's probably the hardest position in any company in the restaurant business, particularly, is being the general manager. And we are very proud to have Janet run that restaurant. She does a tremendous job with it. She has over 20 some years experience in Taco Bell. She lives seven minutes from the restaurant, she told me tonight. <laughs> 10 if she hits traffic. <laughs> so one of the things that was important to us when we found Janet is we knew that we had somebody who cared for not only the building, not only for the investment, but really cared about each and every person that comes through that building from not only the city of Pacifica, but when those folks come worldwide, it's so not only visit Pacifica, but they stop in, they take a picture of, the, of themselves on the patio, they take a picture of the Taco Bell sign, they videotape themselves in there, and um, we are very, very proud to do business here in Pacifica. We are very, very proud to have Janet running that restaurant. So without further ado, I'd like to bring up Janet Amador and present her with the award tonight. Thank you. So, welcome to uh, Taco Bell Corporate. We're delighted that you're here. So, our next presentation, um, it will be made by Deborah Patterson, and that's to present the Individual Community Contributor Award to Christine Stahl. Uh, Christine is uh, part of the uh, Lamari, famous, infamous Lamari Stall Group at Remax Star Properties. And uh, I have to put in a little plug, she's also a board member of Pacificans Care. So, Deborah. Pacifica and she's been part of this community since 1985. If you know Christine like I do, she's constantly busy. It took us three months to organize a breakfast. <laughs> she's been working side by side with her business partner Pete for 26 years and involving that as well, supporting local non-profits non and fundraising events such as the Speakeasy, Rocket Dog Rescue, Pacifica Schools, Adopt a Family, Senior Services Meals on Wheels, Pedro Point Chili Coco, two time winner that she is, and the San Mateo County Association, just to name a few of these. And, and any time you feel that you need a fundraiser or something, you mention it to Christine and she's like, yes, let's go for it. If it's going to support Pacifica, let's do it. And she's off and running. Um, she has two organizations that she's very, very fond of. 
The first one in 2002, she's joined the Moves and Shakers of the Pacificans Care, a 501c raising funds for Pacificans four core agencies, which are Pacifica Resource Center, the Senior Services, Youth Services, and Child Care Services, covering a broad spectrum of all areas that they need services, um, and Christine is there at the forefront with them. Whether it's this 20s speakeasy event, gathering sponsors, and she gathers sponsors, believe you me. Helping with mail outs, going door to door, <coughs> planning a wine tasting event, helping Pacifica families in need, her focus is there. Although there is another foundation that is very dear to her heart, and that is the Rockaway Ricky Memorial Foundation. <laughs> Ricky before his passing a year and a half ago now. Um, he was very well known. He has his own blog. He has his own website. He has his own pens. And with this being said, Christine moved to the forefront of developing a memorial fund which would help with the seniors and pet supplies, vet care expenses, uh, food pets, food for pets and distributed to by Pacificans Care. To date, over $10,000 has been raised with 6000 distributed to the Senior Services Pet Care Program. And this is, I don't know where the calendar is, but wait, up here. So these here are what raises funds for the Rockaway Ricky Memorial Foundation. Absolutely cute. The shop owners and that, we get involved, we have photos of our dogs and we sell them Christine has an event evening and it's a kickoff launch party that is held every December and the public is invited to raise funds for these special events. Christine's special quote is, that's what the seaside town of Pacifica does to you. It makes you want to give back to our Pacifica families and pets in need while keeping our local non-profit organizations alive and creating a thriving community. Thank you, Christine. Uh, Jenny forgot to mention that we're also neighbors. Yeah. So if I'm ever hungry, I just walk over. What's for dinner? No. <laughs> okay. So I do have to mention my business partner, Pete, who a plays a very important part of um, of us funding the Rockaway Ricky. <laughs> important to mention because he pays for half of everything. So, <laughs> so <laughs> what's that, Bill? As he should, right, yeah, as, as he should. Um, you know, Pacific is a great community, and uh, we all have a heart in something that um, is very dear to us, whether it is the Resource Center or the Senior Services or um, Rotary or um, Pacifica Schools. And um, there's a lot of people that have influenced me to, and taught a lot, or I've learned a lot. Um, um, so I guess basically what I want to say is um, if there's something that is dear to your heart, just keep that going, keep that alive. Um, and I know it takes a lot of hard work. And as I said to my new husband, um, the over. <laughs> I, I kept asking him, are you sure you know what you're getting into? <laughs> yeah. So anyway, that's it. Thank you very much. So, and our last but not least award, oh, well, let's right here. Award in this particular category is the uh, Outreach from the Heart Award. And I want to call on Linda Lohr to come forward to make a presentation to Dr. Angel.
That's actually Dr. Angelique uh, Cucaro. Someone then. Uh, Dr. Angel um, operates the Dr. Angel Veterinarian House Calls uh, program, and she's also um, a veterinarian at the Lindemar uh, Veterinary Hospital. So I'm going to turn it over to Lynn to make the presentation. Thank you. There's not a more worthy person to receive this award. As you probably know, uh, to get into veterinary school is harder than to get into medical school, so you can assume that Dr. Kukaro is pretty smart. She has also gone beyond that to get additional training in ultrasounds and also in Eastern medicine, particularly in acupuncture and other palliative <laughs> care that can be done with less impact and fewer side effects for animals. And the aim is obviously to make it easier for the animal to maintain quality of life and also easier for the owners to provide the treatment and the best possible care. Some people go into veterinary medicine or animal welfare because they don't really like people. And nonetheless, they'd like, they'd like to make a contribution to the community. Uh, so finding a veterinarian whose people skills are as good as her veterinary skills is remarkable. And the first time I noticed this, and you may not know it, it was late one evening at Lindenmore Veterinary Hospital, and the place was jammed. And uh, I was waiting on mine to pay to leave. And Dr. Kukaro came out. My dog was a patient of one of her colleagues. She was showing an elderly couple how to administer medication to an elderly cat. And uh, they, they, there were no spare seats. So Dr. Kukaro managed to do this lowering herself down so she was eye level with the people sitting on one and a half seats that were nominally available and showed them how to measure and depress the plunger so that they wouldn't under or overdose the animal. She did it with such concern and patience and she created this very quiet oasis in the middle of Bedlam so that the people would feel confident when they took the cat home that they could administer the medication. It was one of the best things I've ever seen anybody do. Another thing uh, that led Dr. Kukara to set up the veterinary house call practice was perhaps the realization that she wasn't sufficiently overworked. In addition to that, she knew a lot of uh, her clients who had been her clients for days, were themselves getting old, and that it might be hard if you had arthritis and three cats to get everybody and all of the cats into a fairly busy clinic. So her goal was to maintain quality of life for the animals and then eventually give them a humane death in, in their homes without uh, the very difficult times bringing them to the vet clinic. And so she is now uh, both the senior vet at Lindemar Veterinary Hospital and Dr. Angel, appropriately, of Dr. Angel House Call Veterinary Medicine. And I'm delighted that you've got this award. and appreciative of the honor bestowed on me by the Pacifica Chamber of Commerce, and I appreciate the opportunity to be here tonight. I, I was very fortunate to be mentored by the founders of Lindemar Veterinary Hospitals, Dr. Nancy Craig, who's now retired and living in Petaluma, and Linda Mesqua, who has her own clinic in Pescadero, and they really set the standards for my philosophy in the client comes first, the animal comes first. And I was, I've been very blessed to be able to thrive in such a great practice and do what I love, which is taking care of pets and their, and their guardians. Veterinarians don't exist alone, and, but can only do their calling when they're supported by an amazing staff. And over the years at Lindemar, I've been very lucky to work with dedicated, hardworking individuals whose hours and commitment to the veterinary health profession mirror my own. I would like to they recognize the extraordinary devotion of two individuals have done and continue to do their utmost in providing the best of care for animals and their owners. Both Donna Morgan and Kim Lopez, who have worked at Lindemar for almost as long as I have, and I've been there for 28 years. Donna, and if you don't mind standing up, Donna Morgan. She's 
She's our lead certified veterinary technician and she has set the standard of care regarding anesthesia, dental care, surgical assistance, and quality assurance for the training of our technical staff. And she has a very high standard. She also teaches at the Foothill College in Los Altos in the veterinary technician program and she's helping to form future veterinary technicians because again, without good technicians, veterinarians are nothing. Kim, Kim Lopez. Kim started as a receptionist and she became the head client service coordinator and now has been the hospital manager for several years. And she's navigated the hospital through challenging times and she strives to uphold the hospital's commitment to do best what is best for the clients and their pets. And I'm for, fortunate to have great clients as Kim Minnelli. There's Kim. And she was the one that contacted me about my nomination and Lynn Bohr, who introduced me tonight. And so many other so many others with whom I've bonded over the past 28 years that I've been at Lindemar. A lot of people are in this room. Relationships such as these go beyond a standard doctor-client relationship, and they morph into a type of emotional support and guidance. And then my house call practice, Dr. Angel's Veterinary House Calls, is a solo enterprise, so it's just me. Um, then that's a more recent service since um, 2000, uh, since 2014, but it grew out, out of a desire to be there for clients and who want to take care of and ultimately say goodbye to their dog and cat friends in the intimacy of their home. Throughout my career as a veterinarian, and it's really more of a lifestyle rather than a career or profession, it, it's really all enveloping and I'm pretty much on seven days a week, so it, it's very much a commitment. But part of that, and what, what you are, and what they can't teach you in vet school, is empathy, compassion, the love, the thoughtfulness, the kindness, and the ability to communicate effectively with the client. Not just about a disease, and treatment options, and drugs, but also trying to help the pet owner in the relationship with that animal, and helping make the best decision for their pet. I'm fortunate, I have a great support system at home. I have a loving, thoughtful husband. He does all the cleaning and the upkeep of the house. I have never touched a vacuum cleaner. How, how lucky can a girl get? And he's got a sexy French accent. And I have a caring, studious daughter who's also interested in the medical field, so who knows? It'd be Dr. Katya. And she's currently at UC Berkeley. Thank you very much for being here tonight and showing your support for these wonderful members of our community, and that's what makes Pacifica special. Thank you. That concludes our award ceremony for the outstanding businesses in the community. I think we should give them all a great round of applause. <laughs> A uh, very special thank you to the presenters as well. So <clears throat> this year the chamber is recognizing a number of business, new businesses or anyway businesses in the community. Um, so as I introduce them, if you would please stand, and Lynn is going to run the microphone over to. Uh, you and you'll have an opportunity to say a minute or so a little bit about your uh, uh, your business and also receive a uh, certificate of recognition from Congresswoman Jackie Spears. So Lynn, shall we start? All right, so the first one yeah, goes, uh, if, where's Don Vaccaro? Don? All right, we'll bring this over to you. Don is from Pet Food Express. Thank you. Um, thank you, everybody. Thank you for this award. Um, I'm, so, my name is Dawn. I'm the store manager for the Pacifica Pet Food Express. We're located in Lindemar Shopping Center. Um, we've been there for about four years now. This is my assistant manager, Winston. Um, I've been with Pet Food Express about 
about eight years now, and I moved to Pacifica to open up this location. And I have to say, it's been so amazing. The community is so welcoming. You know, I look around the room right now, and all I see is so many familiar faces of everybody who comes into the store. So, you know, you're not just customers. You, we build relationships with everyone. We give back to the community. We have um, adoption events. We, uh, you know, every time you purchase something at our store, if it doesn't work and you return it, we actually donate those products to rescues and shelters. So just know that if it's not working for your dog, you can bring it back and it's no big deal. Um, but, you know, our main thing is community. So we get back to the community. The biggest thing that we have every year is coming up in September. It's called the Pet Fit Express Bay Area Pet Fair. It's in Pleasanton. If anybody has a chance to go, it is the largest um, adoption event in North, North America. So we adopted out about 2,000, 2000 animals last year. And it's a, it's a really great thing. They cleared shelters. It was amazing. So I just want to say thank you. Thank you, everyone. Hey everybody, uh, thank you for this award. Thanks to the Chamber. I'd like to just say that this bakery is a dream come to life and it wouldn't happen without the generosity, kindness, and support of my wife Saba, who is not here tonight, but she is missed. And um, yeah, we're doing it for the kids. Thanks. say thank you for Pacifica Chambers for acknowledging us. Um, so Pacific Oaks Senior Living, we just recently opened last spring. Um, we have vacancies. <laughs> um, so if you know anyone that's interested, um, they can contact me. I'd be more than happy to give them a tour. Um, we're located in Monterra. Um, I have business cards. Come and look for me after the dinner. Thank you. Thanks everybody. So we are a family owned operated business on Palmetto. We sell house plants, we support local artists, and um, I'm lucky to be here with my daughter Taylor, and my husband Jeremy, who I suckered into this endeavor of mine. Um, my son Nick, who is my right hand man, is unable to be here tonight, so I have agreed to accept this recognition um, in his absence as if it were an Oscar. <laughs> And uh, in all seriousness, um, I want to thank you all at the Chamber. It's really, really an honor to be recognized as a new business um, because it's tough. Being a new business is tough, but we're locals to Pacifica, and I knew when I wanted to start a business that I wanted to incorporate the community and my family, for better or for worse. And uh, all your support, your welcome, your warmth has made a first year in business all worth it. Thanks. Aloha everyone, my name is Holly. I am the managing director for Lit, um, the new recreational cannabis dispensary. We're on Palmetto. We just opened in mid-September, and we're so excited to be here. <laughs> Please come visit us anytime. Um, and I'd love to introduce Brett. He's the uh, CEO and founder, owner Brett Chapman, and his mom, Cheryl King. And yeah, we are just so humbled to be acknowledged. This is so lovely. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, everyone. And um, the community has been so beautiful to us, has embraced us, and all the neighbors are lovely. Our business neighbors and all the residential neighbors, all the dogs. I know Don and I talk about the dogs every time I come in. Oh, I met this new dog. And, uh, but it's just been, everyone has just been so beautiful. And I think people are excited that we're here. We're excited to be here. And thank you so much. Hi, thank you for the award. It's really nice to be recognized as a new business. Like others have said, it's a it's a challenge <laughs> in the beginning. My husband and I um, bought um, the laundromat at um, Manor, 695 Manor, in Ramallah Plaza about a year ago. And so we've been in there busy um, redoing and remodeling, and um, things are looking good. We welcome you to come in. We feel really supported by the community, 
And this coming Monday, we're starting dry cleaning services. So we'll be open Monday through Friday, 4 to 7. And um, we appreciate all the support, and we like being part of the community and offering our support, too. Thanks. Thanks for the work. So this concludes the awards portion of the presentation. Congratulations to, congratulations to all the recipients again. And now it's my pleasure to turn it over to your president, Lisa. I just want to thank you all there again for coming and being here tonight. And congratulations to all the honorees and special recognition people. Um, there's one last person that I would like to acknowledge, and that's Lynn Gallo. And I don't know where she went at this point. <laughs> I, I just want to say that you guys have no idea what Lynn does in her spare time. Besides her fabulous dancing skills, she, if you, any of you come here on the weekends, she's here dancing with her husband. They're fabulous ballroom dancers. Um, but Lynn has also told us stories about driving around the um, hotel parking lots at night, 2 o'clock in the morning on the weekends, to see how, how full the hotels are. Um, I, I wake up in the middle of the night and have texts that she's at the office at 2 o'clock in the morning uh, doing things. She's absolutely a powerhouse. And um, I know I have the title of President of the Chamber of Commerce, but I guarantee you I am solely a figurehead. Lynn Gallo is everything. I was trying to think of how to describe her. I mean, she's our brains, our backbone, our hands, our feet. And as you see, saw her running around tonight with the um, microphone. <laughs> she runs laps um, around all of us. And so I just want to give you our love. I always refer to her as my BFF at the chamber, and she really is. She's, uh, she's got a great, um, a great spirit. We've learned so much. One of the things my family has always complained about is how I flip from subject to subject, and Lynn taught, taught us shifting gears before you start a new topic. <laughs> and no matter what's happening, she'll tell you, I'm stressed out, this is, you know, I'm really worried about this, but you know what, it's gonna be fine and we're gonna take care of it. And you know, you just feel like you're in great hands with her. So Lynn, we absolutely love you and adore you. Thank you so much for this. So, uh, that concludes the evening. However, I believe dessert is on its way. So, if you'd like to stay for coffee and dessert, uh, enjoy the conversation and have a good evening. Thank you.